Hi everybody, Nick Marzinski here with TrappingLight.com, and in my last post on the blog, I discussed my thoughts about the new Nick plugin, Analog Effects Pro. In this video, I want to take it out for a spin and just give those of you that aren't familiar with it a sense of how it works. Now, what I've got here is I've got a picture of Cinderella's castle that I shot at Disney World about a month ago, and I've already edited my image up in Photoshop, so there was some distracting tree uh, stuff here that I took out with the Content Aware Fill. I got rid of some other distractions in the image. I did some dodging and burning and that sort of stuff. So I've already taken care of all of my uh, image optimization edits. And at this point, I start going on to um, creative image edits, and that's where Analog Effects Pro comes into play. What I want to do with this image is I want to make it look as though it was shot uh, by a tourist when the park opened back in the early 1970s, okay? Um, and Analog Effects Pro is great at doing that because really what it is is it's a whole library of, of retro effects. It makes it look like your digital image was shot using a film-based camera. So light leaks, distortion, dust, scratches, film toning, blur, grain, all that sort of stuff is right here in a single place. It's really it's a buffet of, of, of analog, of vintage effects, and that's one of the reasons why I really like this plugin. Now, Analog Effects Pro is, designed, uh, is divided into three sections on the screen. If you're familiar with the NIC plugins or you're familiar with something like Lightroom, uh, this should be a pretty, um, pretty intuitive for you. The left side of the screen is devoted to, um, to presets as well as a history palette and um, a custom uh, palette with um, presets that you might have saved. In the center, you have um, your image, obviously, that you're editing. And over on the right-hand side of the image, you have, or on the right-hand side, side of the screen, rather, you have um, filters that you can do some slider-based um, changes to. So with this plugin with almost any of of the um, nick plugins i start off on the left hand side to dial in my look with a preset in this case analog effects gives you four different presets that you can use there's classic cameras which really provides just a, a sort of film effect it's very very restrained it's very very subtle um, out of all of the presets that you have here these are the most subtle the wet plate uh, presets are designed to emulate uh, the black and white collodion um, photography that was very very common in the 19th century. Toy cameras mimic um, film cameras generally that had cheap poor quality plastic lenses and so there's a lot of distortions and aberrations and vignetting that occurs. And then the vintage cameras um, are for um, an effect of an old camera that's basically falling apart. There's lots of light leaks, there's framing, um, there's vignetting and um, uh, and, and poor lens quality effects on the image. And then there's also this camera kit at the bottom, and that's something that I'll get into later. For this image right here, like I said, I want to make it look like it was uh, shot with an old crummy image from back in the 1970s, and so I'm going to choose the vintage camera presets. When I do that, it brings up this set of presets that I've got available and shows me what my image would look like if each of these presets were applied. In this case, I'm thinking that um, either Vintage Camera 2 or Vintage Camera 7 would probably be uh, one of the more interesting ones. And in this case, I'm going to choose Vintage Camera 7. When I do that, the effect is applied. And so you can see exactly what it looks like right on the image. And at this point, I can move over to the right side of the image and start working through the filters and uh, customizing the look that I'm getting from this preset. So I'm going to start up at the top and move my work my way down. This basic adjustments panel is designed to um, really allow you to dial in how the film within this vintage camera that you're using works. For those of you that are used to other NIC plugins such as Viveza or HDR Effects or Silver Effects Pro, these kind of sliders that you see here, the distraction, uh, the detail extraction, brightness, contrast, and saturation, would be ones that you would use to dial in the overall tonality of your image. But that's not really how it works. Remember that 
Analog Effects Pro is designed to create vintage effects, and these sliders are used in service of that. So there's no control points, there's, there's no selective editing. What these do is they allow you to customize how the film would look in your camera. So the detail extraction in this case, if you dial this all the way down, it really makes it look like the lens has poor, uh, is very, very poor at, at pulling out the detail. This whole area at the bottom of my image here with this detail extraction set low is very, very muddy. It's hard to pick out the trees and the lake there. And so this allows you to determine what kind of how the, 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 the film in the camera as well as the lens that you would be using if this were actually taken with a vintage camera, how that's actually working. Um, in this case for brightness, I'm going to keep it right around the center. The contrast, I actually want to lower it a little bit, make it look like the lens was not as good at, at teasing the contrast out of the image. And the saturation I'm actually going to leave alone. From there, I'm going to move down uh, into the bokeh, where we're looking at the blur uh, around the image. Now, if I mouse over the image, you can see that I get this display here, and I can move this to set the area of my image that's in focus. And what I want is I want this castle here to be pretty much in focus, and then everything around it can fall off to blur, but I do want the castle to uh, to be the center of attention obviously that would be what the person what you would be focusing in on and so that's where the focus needs to be um, there's also the ability to play with the aperture to uh, introduce different aperture settings and to rotate the aperture in this image that really doesn't produce a very good effect there's not a whole lot of um, uh, because it's a landscape there's not a whole lot of interesting aperture effects that you would really want to have of uh, going on in this image, but that tool is available for you to use. Moving on to light leaks. Light leaks, for those of you that, that don't remember how film cameras used to work, if any light hit the, hit the film in the camera, you were going to get these kinds of defects on your image, okay? Those, those were caused by holes in uh, the, the, the camera where it would allow light to get in there. And so they're really image defects, but nowadays with people liking the, the, the retro look, they've kind of come back into style. Analog Effects Pro gives you a whole bunch of different light leaks to choose from. There's the crisp ones that you can see right down here. There's also soft ones which produce a more flaring sort of look as well as dynamic, or excuse, yeah, dynamic, that's what they're called, um, light leaks that are more of a blurry sort of motion-y light leak that you would, uh, that you would get if, you, if the camera was moving. In this case, I like the crisp light leaks. Um, this one down on the bottom here um, is pretty good. The strength slider determines how strong that light leak is and how much of it shows through. Obviously, if it's set to zero, you, you don't see any light leak. If it's set to 100, you get the full effect. In this case, even at 100, this light leak is fairly muted. The other thing that you can do with light leaks in this plugin is that if you mouse over the image, you get a little blue uh, circle here. You can use this to move around and move that light leak around. Unfortunately, you can't rotate the light leaks. You really can't scale them, but you do have the ability to affect where they are in their image. So if you get a light leak that, where you like the way it looks, but it's over a, um, a crucial element of your image that you don't want that light leak to be over, uh, moving this uh, blue circle here will allow you to position your light leak where you want it to be. The other thing about all of these filters that are here is that if there's a checkbox on all of them, if you don't want a light leak on your camera in, in your image, say, you can always uncheck this and that will make that filter um, that will disable that filter so in this case the light leak is gone and however I kind of like what I'm getting here so I'm gonna keep that light leak in the frame of this image that I have right here is really what I'm not interested in so in the frames down here I'm gonna uncheck that and the frame will go away lens vignetting works similar to the bouquet that um, I explained about up here. You again, if you mouse over the image, you've got this uh, circle that you can move and and work with that will show you where um, the vignette is on your image. Um, you can also change it from a circle vignette to a square vignette, and you can see what it's doing to uh, to the display right there, where the the display right here is becoming more of a rectangle as I drag the slider over to the right. Take that 
down just a little bit. And the vignette is a little strong for me, so I think I'm going to just dial this just so that you get a little bit of a vignette. Finally, there's a film type on this, which allows you to decide the, the toning of your film. There's subtle tones, um, as well as warm and cool tones. The tones for each of those go from left to right, where it's the most restrained, to on the right, it's the, it's the hardest. So this is probably not an easy one to see if I go to cool that's fairly restrained and then you can see that it starts to bring some of the, more of the the toning out uh, the further to the right that I choose for the plugin uh, or for the for the tone rather in this case I think that this top subtle one looks pretty good I'm gonna move it a little bit over towards the faded to just make it look like um, the picture probably faded a little bit with age and maybe take the strength down a little bit in this image I, I'm not really crazy about the grain that it's introducing. There is these two grain sliders here where you can select how much grain you want. If you drag it to the left, you get more grain. If you drag it to the right, you get less grain. And then you can also determine how hard or soft your grain is based off of how you drag this bottom slider here. In this case, I'm going to take the grain all the way up to 500 uh, so that it pretty much gets it out uh, of my image. Now, all of the filters that you have here are dependent on the preset that you chose right at the beginning here. But let's say that there's a filter that I know is within analog effects that I want to use, but I don't have it because I chose a vintage camera. Well, that's where this camera kit comes into play. If I select the camera kit, it doesn't change my image at all, but it does allow me to select a different, any, any palette that I want and pull it into this set of palettes that I've got on the right side of my image. In this case, I want to introduce some dirt and scratches onto my image. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up a dirt and scratches palette here. And at this point, let's go to eroded and let's add some eroded uh, look, uh, eroded um, kind of dirt and dust to my image. Make it look like it's just a bit grunged up because the image is so old. Actually, I think that some of these darker ones are a little bit better. There we go. Take the strength down on that just a little bit, just so you can see a little bit of dirt on that image. But any of uh, these that are here, I can bring over to um, to the image so that I can use them, um, even if they're not part of my original image set. Now that I've pretty much got the image the way that I want it, if I want to apply this effect again to, say, a different image, the easiest way to do that is to click the Save button here, and that will allow me to create a custom preset. If I click it, it asks for a name. I'll call this Dirty Vintage. And click OK. At that point, it's saved right here in my custom panel. So if I come in to Analog Effects Pro with a different image and I go, you know what, I want to apply the same effects that I applied to that image of Disney's Castle, I can click on the Dirty Vintage custom preset right here down on the bottom and it will immediately apply that. I won't have to go through all of the editing here because all of the adjustments that I've made in my user-defined filters are done. They're already made. Once I'm done with the image, I can just click OK and then it's going to bring it right back over to Photoshop as a new layer and then I can continue my editing work in Photoshop. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Nick plugins, as it's loading into Photoshop, I just want to talk about how this works. When Google purchased Nick, all of those plugins were combined into what's called the Nick Complete Collection. So that includes, at this point, seven different plugins, Color Effects Pro, Silver FX Pro, HDR FX Pro, Viveza, Sharpener Pro, Define, and Vintage, or, and excuse me, Analog FX Pro. It's not Vintage FX Pro, it's Analog FX Pro. Um, for those of you that already have the complete collection, that already own it, oh, um, Analog FX Pro is included, and so uh, in many cases, Google or Nick will automatically push the download out to you. If you check in your filters menu in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, you may see that you already have Analog's Eff Analog FX Pro installed on your machine. If not, visit um, 
Nick Software's website at nicksoftware.com, and you should be able to um, find instructions for how you can download uh, a new version of the complete collection with Analog Effects Pro included. But Analog Effects Pro is a free update. In addition, Google has also said, Nick and, Nick and Google have also said that there's going to be additional camera types. So this plugin will continue to evolve, which is fairly exciting. It's interesting the way it is right now where you can apply all of these cool uh, vintage and retro effects to your image. But the fact that they'll be bringing additional camera types, additional controls to Analog Effects Pro is pretty exciting. So once it's in Photoshop, I can do any of the Photoshop edits that I'd want since it's saved as its own layer. I can mask it. I can change the opacity of it to bring some of the original image back. I can alter the blend mode. All of those different effects that I've got within Photoshop and those different tools that I have within Photoshop are still available and I can use it right on this layer. So in a nutshell, that's how Analog Effects Pro works. Uh, for those of you that have uh, the Nick Complete Collection already, I hope that you play around with the plugin and, and get a sense of what you can do with it. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty exciting. For those of you that don't have uh, Nick Complete Collection but are interested in the plugin, take a look at Complete Collection. There's a lot of wonderful plugins that you get there for that one price. So that's it for Analog Effects Pro. My name is Nick Marzinski with TrappingLight.com. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you have a nice weekend.